Welcome to Oncology Data Advisor, a digital resource for the multidisciplinary cancer team. Today, I am joined by Dr. Richard Carvajal, a leader in rare melanoma research from Northwell Health Cancer Institute in New York to discuss the recent FDA approval of melphalan for liver-directed treatment of uveal melanoma. My name is Rich Carvajal. I'm a medical oncologist at the Northwell Health uh, Cancer Institute. I'm the deputy physician in chief overseeing hematology and oncology at, at the Northwell system. Thank you, Dr. Carvajal, for meeting today to talk about this uh, FDA approval. It's very exciting. Um, so just for a, a brief background, I wanted to ask you, how does uveal melanoma affect the liver and how does liver directed treatment work for treating the disease? So uveal melanoma is a really uncommon subtype of, of melanoma. We'll see maybe about 3,000 cases a year. Um, and the biology of this disease, the weight response to therapy, it's, it's very different from the more common cutaneous disease. Um, it, it's um, characteristically uh, very hepatotropic. So, um, you know, about 40 to 50 percent of patients uh, who are diagnosed with a primary uveal melanoma will ultimately develop metastasis with the vast majority um, having involvement in the liver, either either liver only or liver predominant. Um, and, and so because of that, when we think about how we manage patients with metastatic disease, um, we can think about doing systemic therapy, certainly. Um, and, and we have to vent to FUSP approved for a subset of those patients who are HLA-0201 positive. Um, but we can also think about what we call regional or liver-directed therapies, again, because it's it's so liver predominant. Um, you know, and, you know, when we think of those liver-directed therapies, historically, we've thought about doing things like, um, um, you know, infusion of chemotherapy, so hepatic arterial infusion of chemotherapy, or, um, um, you know, kind of embolic-type procedures, um, you know, ad addressing the, 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 the tumor, um, you know, vasculature. Um, so things like radioembolization, chemoembolization have been common. To talk a bit more on the clinical trial aspect of it. Could you give us a brief overview of the FOCUS trial and the FDA approval that led to melphalan for treatment of uveal melanoma? Yeah, so, so now we have, um, with this FDA approval, we really have the first liver-directed therapy with regulatory approval for metastatic uveal melanoma. And, and so that's based off of this FOCUS trial. Um, which started out actually as a randomized trial of uh, the, the hepatic arterial infusion, you kind know, of um, percutaneous hepatic perfusion of melphalan um, versus investigator choice. But because of accrual issues, it, it really became a single arm trial. And so in the end, this is a phase um, three single arm trial, 91 patients who were treated with this DELCAT system. Um, the primary endpoint of this trial was response rate uh, with, you know, importance cer certainly played to duration of response. The procedure itself, um, you know, a little bit intensive. It requires general anesthesia. Um, the, the liver itself is kind of taken out of systemic circulation. So the melphalan is infused in, in really high concentrations to the liver. And this is a procedure, again, it requires general anesthesia. Uh, it's done in the IR surgical suite. It's, it's a uh, percutaneous, so it's not an open surgery, but, but it's a procedure that can be repeated at six to eight week intervals. And on the trial, patients would receive up to six therapies. Um, so the trial, um, you know, impressive results in terms of response rate, durability of response. So the response rate was 36%, which, you know, frankly, I, I've been um, managing and treating patients with this disease for a long time. And, you know, when we saw a response rate of like, 10%, we were really excited. So, so to see a 36% response rate, I think is meaningful. Um, but more important than that, the durability of response was really good at about 14 months. So the, the clinical efficacy was, was good. Um, the procedure, it is, it is a procedure, it comes, you know, at, with kind of associated toxicities, both from the procedure as well as from the melphalan. And so if you look at the um, FDA um, approval, there is kind of a, a black box kind of warning. I'm talking about the, the periprocedural complications of things like thrombosis or bleeding, as well as, um, you know, we'll commonly see um, myelosuppression as well um, due to the, the melphalan. Um, and so uh, the approval comes with a REMS um, process um, to kind of mitigate those, those risks.
Fantastic. Thank you for sharing all that with us. And you started talking about how this is like the first regular approval for metastatic uveal melanoma. What does this approval mean for the future of this rare disease? Yeah, I, I think it's 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 amazing because just over the past few years, we have um, approval of tibentafusp as the first systemic therapy approved for this disease. Um, and, and now we have uh, this Delcath system as, as the first liver-directed therapy for this disease. So I mean, it's it's really amazing that you know it it took this long to kind of make this this degree of progress, um, and so I think to have um, therapies with proven efficacy now this really serves as a springboard to build upon even even better better therapies. Um, you know, now we have an approved liver directed therapy. And, you know, and questions may be um, how can we deliver this more safely or easier. Um, you know, is this something that we might consider combining with um, with systemic therapy, whether it's, you know, perhaps checkpoint blockade or targeted therapies, um, you know, and certainly there, there are additional questions now that I think uh, hopefully will be investigated and answered with this approval. Going through the clinical trial and research, did you, are there any limitations on the study that you would like to see addressed in future studies to potentially broaden the treatment options for this disease? Yeah, I think one one of the questions will be, I mean, you know, the, the efficacy in this single arm trial, it's, it's good. You know, we see the high response rate, it's it's durable, comes with the cost of some toxicity. I, you know, I, I, I guess one question will be, what what is the uptake of this um, procedure um, going to be? Um, it is complicated. It will have to be done at specialty centers. It is resource intensive. And there are other regional therapies um, like radioembolization, chemoembolization, maybe other things, immunoembolization, as well as other investigational therapies. Um, and it's, you know, it's not entirely clear that this DELCAT system is 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 really going to be superior um, to these, these other procedures, which you know, are, are more commonly done and, you know, in terms of procedural feasibility may be a little bit easier to do. Um, so I think that's that's something that's going to be important to, to figure out. Um, certainly, if, if, the effic if we knew the efficacy was superior despite that toxicity, uh, if we knew it was better than radioembo, then I think, you know, institutions, investigators would push more to increase availability uh, of this to our patients. Fantastic. And final question I have for you today is, are there any current or future studies you're aware of that you'd like to bring awareness to? Yeah, thankfully in this field, um, you know, there, there is an ever-increasing number of, of um, therapies and agents being being studied. There's really promising emerging data um, about Dorobacertib, which is being developed by IDEA. Um, Dorobacertib is a protein kinase C inhibitor, which and when combined with, with crizotinib is, is showing really nice response rates that tend to be durable with, with promising long-term um, clinical efficacy. So that's that's data that's been released. The phase three trial has just started um, where Darrow plus Crizo is being uh, compared with investigator choice. Um, and uh, that drug's also being tested in the neoadjuvant setting um, prior to a nucleation or plaque brachytherapy. So I think that's that's one to look out for. Another company called Trisalis um, is, is studying the uh, intrahepatic delivery of a drug called SD101, which is toll-like receptor 9 agonist. Um, and so that's being infused into the liver. It's another regional liver-directed therapy um, aimed at kind of modulating the immune microenvironment of the liver. And so that's being uh, administered concurrently with checkpoint blockade. Uh, and in data that's also been uh, released is showing really promising um, progression-free survival. Uh, and so, um, so I think that's that's another one where I'm, I'm really excited to kind of see where where that data goes. Thank you so much for all your research and insight on this topic, and congratulations on this approval. Thank you so much, Dr. Carvajal. Thanks, Lynn.